filling in the gaps as an engineering student. So engineering is one of the hardest majors for people in college. I still think engineering is probably harder than math. I don't know. I've never taken uh, hard engineering courses, but I've had friends that take them and I see how they struggle. I see the types of assignments they have. I see the tests they have and it's pretty tough. It's pretty tough. I feel like it's a struggle and I definitely prefer mathematics and that's why I studied math and not engineering. So how do you fill in gaps? How do you strengthen your mathematics if you're an engineering major? This video is motivated by an email I received from a viewer. It's a short email. I'll read it and I'll do my best to answer it. If you have any advice for this person, leave a comment in the comment section below. Remember, when you leave comments, it helps other people. Okay, here's the email. The person's name is Adrian. The subject is mathematics. Hello, math sorcerer. I just wanted to ask you a question about mathematics. I am currently working on my undergraduate degree for engineering, and I have taken calculus one, calculus two, calculus three, and I am now in differential equations. And I started to realize I have lots of gaps in my mathematical knowledge. I will be taking more rigorous courses in my degree, and I am beginning to feel insecure about my academic abilities to succeed in those classes since my math background is not solid. What advice can you provide to fill in those gaps? So first, I want to address the fact that you said that you are starting to feel insecure. Now, I don't know why. I'm not a mind reader, but I have taught a ton of differential equations courses, and one of the really beautiful, in my opinion, and interesting things about differential equations is that there's all these techniques that you use from other levels of math in the study of differential equations. For example, you, you use the rational roots theorem from college algebra. You use all the integration techniques that you learn in calculus one and calculus two. Um, you, you do some partial differentiation. You learn that in calculus three. So you use things that you learn in other courses, partial fractions, which is taught in pre-calc. You use that a lot when you're studying Laplace transforms. So there's a lot of mathematics in differential equations. It's not just about the differential equations techniques. It's about all of those old techniques that you get to revisit and strengthen. And oftentimes what happens is you take a differential equations class and you have a professor and they just kind of like assume you know all this stuff and they keep pushing forward. And personally, this is just my opinion, I don't like that. I don't think that's right. I, I don't think it's good to assume. I think, I think it's better to spend just a little bit of time reviewing those things because those are learning opportunities for people because the second time you see something, it's better. Like when you first see uh, the rational roots theorem in college algebra, you learn it uh, for the test, you study, you take the test, you do well, you forget it. Then, you know, some years go by, you take differential equations, you do it again, but this time it's cooler because it's something you learned before. So it's kind of more interesting. And the second time you see it, it's always easier. It's like, that's why reviewing is so good. Going back and reviewing mathematics makes you so good, which is what you should do. So my number one piece of advice, I have, I have three pieces of advice. Number one is to go back and you have your notes, you have your books, go back and go through all of your notes from all of your math classes, because those are notes that you wrote down, things that you paraphrased already, things that you've already seen. You're already familiar with those explanations. So seeing them again is gonna make it easier for you the second time around. And it's easy, it's free. It doesn't cost any money. You already have the notes. You don't have to buy anything. You don't have to buy a book. You don't have to buy a course, right? You already have these things and they're gonna work well for you because these are notes you took, right? So revisit all the stuff you learned in your math classes. Now, a warning, don't let it interfere with your engineering classes, okay? This is a trap that we all fell into. It's way more fun to go back and review things that you've already learned than to do what you're supposed to do, right? Because no one likes to be told what to do, right? People wanna do what they wanna do, right? If you wanna learn something, you wanna learn it for the sake of learning, not because there's some great attached or something like that, right? You wanna have freedom to do whatever you wanna do, whatever you wanna learn, just that, that freedom is beautiful. And so a lot of times people who are in hard math classes or hard engineering classes or hard whatever classes, they'd rather do something else and that's, that's normal, that's normal. But use your free time to review your notes. I think that's 
the best method, that's method number one. Method number two is get some books. I'll leave some links in the description to some books you can check out. Uh, just books you know, on calculus, differential equations, algebra, pre-calc, uh, stuff like that. Those can help you. Uh, you might need some books because maybe, I mean, in today's era, a lot of the college courses use online books. So a lot of students don't even have the physical books, which I think is unfortunate, but it's just a reality of what's, what's happened in society, right? Books are expensive, and so uh, you know the internet was created, and these online these online uh, homework companies you know came about, and it's cheaper for students to buy a code and have all this help from the online homework system. It's easier for the professor because the professor doesn't have to grade. So online homework is a thing for various reasons. I'm not saying it's the best or the worst. I'm just saying it's a thing, and so you might not have your book. So if you don't have a book, uh, check out the links in the description and I will leave you some books that you can check out. And when you click the link, just get a used copy, right? You don't have to get a new one unless you want to. Most of my books, not all of them, most of them I bought used. Some of my books I paid a lot of money for. A lot, like, when I say a lot of money, I mean like, well, actually some I paid over 200 for, a long time ago. Typically now I, I try to pay less than 40 or $50 for a book when I buy a book. Most of the books I buy are in the uh, five to $20 range. And you should be able to get some books through those links that are used in that range, hopefully. So get some books if you don't have them. Method number three is to take courses, right? There's all kinds of online courses you can take. Um, I have courses, you know, they're on my website, mathsorcerer.com. They're actually on the Udemy platform, uh, but if you get them, use my links, please. It helps me greatly, and I've lowered the price to the bare minimum. So when you use my links, you get a low price, mathsorcerer.com. And it's perfect for you because I have courses on Calc 1, Calc 2, Calc 3, differential equations, college algebra, trig, and I have some other stuff as well. So it will help you a lot, right? It'll help you a lot. So that's, that's something else you can do. You can get those courses and use your notes together with the courses. And you can do all three, right? Take your notes, get some books, take some courses, start some self-study. It's not going to make you invincible. Let me just say that. It's not going to make you a monster. Like, you're not going to become like this, like, engineering guru. But, but... When you're in those classes, right, and you're sitting with your classmates, and the teacher's up there, and he's explaining something that involves some physics and some concepts, and there's an equation, there's some math, that, that's going to be hard, right? But you have an advantage, because if your math is stronger than other people, if your math is very powerful, you can listen to the professor, and there's a good chance you'll be able to understand things better and quite well, because your math is so strong. If you have a good math background, and someone's explaining something and there's math involved, you're like, oh, I know that mathematics. Oh, I know what's going on. Oh, I know how to do that. It's gonna bring back some positive memories. You'll be sitting in class and you'll get excited. You'll get excited when those engineering professors are doing some math and people might be confused, but you won't because you'll have that strong math background. So I do think it is worth filling in the gaps if you are an engineering major. I think it'll make you happier as a student and I think it will help your grade because you'll understand things better and yeah, I think it's gonna be a good experience for you. So yeah, that's my advice. Uh, didn't expect this video to be this long. This is supposed to be like a two minute video. Uh, but yeah, hopefully this, this can help you and hopefully it helps uh, someone else. So yeah, Adrian, Adrian, hopefully it's been helpful to you. If anyone else has advice for Adrian, uh, leave a comment in the comment section below. And if you wanna subscribe, you can if you want to. The key takeaway is it does help to have a strong math background, but be careful right? Always focus on what you're supposed to do first, right? If, if you have a class, even if it sucks, <laughs> you're in the class, suck it up and do it, right? That's, that's what you do. That's how you succeed. And honestly, one of the big things that you learn from a college education, is, there's a bunch of things. I should make a video on this. But one of the big things is you learn how to work hard and you learn how to just do what you're supposed to do and suck it up. And, you know, you take a lot of classes you don't want to take. And I think it makes you stronger. Anyways, I didn't mean to derail. Keep doing mathematics.